It's Monday morning, you need to go to work, so you take your car, and then you're stuck in this traffic jam. Consider that most of the cars that you have around, they are going to the exact same destination as you do in the center of the city. And consider that all of that car, they have just one person inside. So let's see what are the main ways of commuting that we can have today, but also what we could have tomorrow to solve this traffic problem. Today, either we take a bus, a train, so public transportation, or we take a private car, or a taxi, or an Uber. In the future, there could be a third way. Let me summarize the basic concept of it. I will unveil to you later what it will be precisely. The main idea is uh, car jumping, meaning that you change a car while you're moving on the road without any stop. So you change a car, go into the car next to yours, if you're going to the same destination. So the remaining car now is freed up. Why do this? Compare what today happens with regular cars, because people take private cars or taxis because they want ubiquity. They want a door-to-door -door service. And it's fine, but the problem is that when all of them, they converge to the center of the city, they create a massive congestion. What can happen if you do something different? With car jumping, we start uh, with our own car, as for the current taxi scenario, but afterwards, what if we jump into the car that it's going to our same destination? Well, in this case, things change a lot. Instead of 1.2 people per car, we have four people per car, so we create much less traffic, even if the service is completely door-to-door. It seems a very interesting solution, but also quite impractical, right? How do we, we physically and safely move people between cars? I mean, we are not Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible at 8 a.m. in the morning. And how to know in which car we have to go? Do we need to put a sticker on it? And last but not least, cars have five seats inside. So, who wants to go shoulder by shoulder with a stranger just to relieve traffic congestion? We need to create a new type of vehicles. And this is roughly what we envisioned. These rooms on wheels, they have the doors not on the sides, like a traditional car or bus, but in the front and on the back. So when they dock together, the doors will open, and the people can walk freely among them, safely. I'm very sorry for the most adventurous of you. This is a brief video, simplified version of it, where all these rooms on wheels, let's call them pods, they go to pick up people like taxis. All of them, they have one driver inside, so it's extremely similar to a taxi in the last mile. But when they dock together on the side of the roads, the people you see, they concentrate, they group in the front pods. So when the front pods are full, it becomes like a full bus, while the remaining pods, they are free for other customers to be picked up in the local area. See the difference? If all of them, they would take a taxi, the queue generated is 60 meters compared to just five meters to move 18 passengers here. So you see how this system can pack much more people in a smaller amount of space, while it's uh, completely door-to-door. -door. Let's formalize this in an overview. Each journey has uh, an origin and a destination. In this chart, the destination are the three colors. So the people with the same color are going to the same destination. 
What we cannot do now, today, is pulling people that are going to different destinations, even if they are coming from the same origin point. But with this system, they just need to go to the same road for a certain amount of time to have the possibility to redistribute in the pods. So you see, they are pulled everywhere. Then since the system knows where they need to go, because you book your trip via an app like Uber, then the pods connect, the people will just walk on the right pod, and then they disconnect to go to the final destination. Also, the New York University have tried to study this uh, car jumping scenario. What we see on the left side, on the top, it's what regular cars do, like taxis. They start from origin and they go direct destination. On the bottom of it, on the left side, you see how car jumping works. In the middle of the origin points, they connect together. They use just the, the smallest amount of pods necessary to move that people. Then where, where they are in the center of the destination point, they use other pods to split them and to go to the final destination. So, if you compare 100,000 of random origin and destination points, you see that if we want to pack just four people inside, we see that the total distance traveled by the, the entire fleet of vehicles passed from 91 to 32. So, more than 60% six, less, uh, less traveled distance per vehicle. Well, you may think that this works fine in a simulated environment, in a simplified city, but how does this scale up in a large network on a real city? So let's compare in this uh, congestion-generated density map what public transportation do, what regular cars do, and what car jumping do. Public transportation are very good for design, to create less congestion in the center of the city. But of course, they are not ubiquitous. Regular cars are very good in the suburbs, but they are very, very bad in the center of the city because they create a lot of traffic, so they slow down the cars. Car jumping is in the middle between the taxi and the public transportation because they pick up the people in the suburbs but then, before going to the center of the city, they concentrate the people to create less and less traffic. Something almost as important as traffic is the travel time. If we take a bus, we don't just need to consider the time that we stay inside the bus, but we need to consider the time to walk to the station, to wait for the bus. And then inside the bus, you have to wait for each stop then when you arrive at your stop, you need to walk to your destination. If you take a taxi, it's quite good, but if you can take your private car, you need to park the car. And even if the car generates a lot of traffic downtown, so it slows down the entire flow. With these pods, you have the same ubiquitous service as a taxi, but then when they converge together, they create a lean service as a full bus in the center of the city, without any stops. The savings that can be generated by this new solution are amazing. They, they save three times compared to public transportation, because most of the time, public transportation are completely underutilized. On the other side, they create three times less traffic congestion compared to cars. The problem is that if the user experience of this new solution is not comparable to what we have today, nobody will use that, even if it's okay for the traffic. So let's compare this with buses. Well, you see that it's something extremely convenient for people compared to bus. Because you don't need to walk to the station, you don't need to wait for it, you don't need to stop several times, and you don't need to walk to the destination. You just book a ride like a Uber, then you jump inside your pod, 
like a taxi. And then when the, the pods connect together, you don't need to walk under the meters. You just need to walk a couple of meters to sit in the correct, in the correct seat. Then afterwards, all of the people going to the same destination will be delivered and they pay with, with their phone at the end of the trip. We didn't want just to imagine this or do simulation about it. We really wanted to create a real product for everyday people. So I'm glad to tell you that at the beginning of this year, we presented the first two working vehicles in the city of Dubai, and we are now under current testing. I imagine a future where the traffic will be so light that we can take apart the spaces from the lanes and use the, and put green spaces on that. A future where uh, bicycles and pedestrians can live together in equilibrium. I, I think about a future, I dream about a future where traveling will be not more wasted time, but it will be life in motion. Thank you.